Welcome back to the channel. Today, making campaign maps for sharp practice. That's right, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be making a ladder campaign map for sharp practice. Now, there are three types of campaign for sharp practice. There's the... Uh, the is it the, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, this is the narrative campaign where it's you play mission one, then mission two, then mission three, then mission four, and uh, no matter the outcome of each mission, you will uh, play always play the next in the line. So, for example, um, so you're harassing a retreating enemy, um, they're always going to be retreating. So you go, it's an ambush in the woods, and then next one you manage to to catch up to the rear guard, and then maybe you're attacking them in the front. So it's every mission is the same no matter what happens previously. Uh, then there's the second option, which is the the narrative narrative campaign, but it's like a choose your own adventure book. So you have um, you come to a crossroads. Do you go left or right? And if you go left, then A. If you go right, then B. Uh, if you win this game, then you'll go on to game number twenty-seven. But if you lose the game, you go to number three or, or number thirty-five. It's yeah, one of those you know that deal the type, choose your own adventure type books. But the one we're going to be doing today is the sort of ladder campaign. Uh, actually, ladder campaign, I think, is a, is a chain of command type thing. I'm not very familiar with the chain of command campaigns. I've run a few sharp practice campaigns, so that's the sort of... That's the one I'll show off, and this is actually one that I will be will be going through, so... So, let's get started. Um, these, the way these things work is I have 24 uh, things here, 3 and 8, make 24. Uh, I won't get the abacus out and show you, but uh, you'll have to take my word for it. And these, uh, all these files will be available on uh, for free on uh, what's it called uh, Thingiverse in the description below. So you can see like a half size tiny uh, hexagon, a half size small hexagon, a normal size medium, and a normal size large. And uh, these can of course be extruded. Uh, I'm in Google SketchUp by the way, a free program for you to use. Uh, you can download it in a link in the description below, and you can make these big if you want or keep them as they are, they can be recolored, and they will be. So I'm going to take this, our line tool, and uh, a fillet tool here. So I can never find the fillet tool, but it's in there. Um, and we're going to make this into something like this. This is my, uh, the biggest campaign I've ever run for the American Civil War. It was actually a two-person campaign, but they had two armies each, each with their own map. So basically fighting this thing. And um, yeah, it was, it was very fun. It was a lot of fun. Very cool. Um, Confederates down here, Union up here in the, I believe, 1861. Really cool game. Uh, it was a really cool campaign set of games. So we're going to go again, but this time in 1862. So as you can see, it's all hexagon based. Uh, these are sort of swampy areas here. These are fields. Uh, I might pick better colors, but you know, you can get the deal. So it's, uh, yeah, very cool. I like it. It's very easy. Someone who knows their way around Photoshop could probably do a much better job, but uh, this is what I know how to do. I'm a 3D design guy from, uh, well, I'm an engineering student. I used to be an engineering student before I moved on to other things. And I've spent five or six years with AutoCAD. If you count all the time in high school, then university, oh, probably 10. I've been using AutoCAD type programs for more than 10 years now. Um, so I, I like to think I know my way around them much better than I do something like uh, GIMP, which is my which is my uh, three uh, my artistic thing of choice, the sort of Photoshop. Anyway, I'm just rambling. So we're going to go, I have my tablet here with my chart on it, because you can get this in PDF form. And I'm going to start rolling some dice to find out what my map's going to look like. So here we are, ready for the first roll. And uh, this is, of course, B4 square number one here. So, welcome back. Here we are, ready to make our sharp practice campaign board. So, the first thing I've done is gone to the, the bucket tool here and gone to landscaping, fencing, and grass dark green. Um, I've actually made it a little bit bigger just so we get that sort of effect. And this is the sort of effect we're going for. Again, someone with a Photoshop program could do this much better, but this is nice and quick. And it's nice and easy, and it's what I know how to do. So, let's roll for our first hex. This one here. Oh, for, before we do anything. We have to put our road in. So our road, the way I do roads is I just go like that, and then sort of like that, and there, and then there. And we'll go there, and there, so there. Just do a little bit random. And then uh, we'll go up straight to there, to there. 
So because of the scale that I've got it on, uh, I'll make them 15 wide. 15 there and 15 there. And then just down. Uh, red is, is in this axis here. So red and green makes make sure we're perfect with that. And blue is perfect with that for a reference. Now it's a bit hard to see now. But uh, in a moment, it'll be very clear. So bear with me. Let me just cut this out. So as you can see, I'm just going to the point here, 15, 15, 15, 15, and then joining the two extra lines up. So uh, not rocket science. There might be, there probably is better ways to do it. This is just the best way to sort of show you guys on camera. Um, it's probably not the way that I'd be doing it if I was uh, <laughs> sitting down to do one of my, you know, one of my own personal ones. But if I'm going to do it, I might as well show people how to do it because it's a really cool uh, campaign system. And I'm, going to really enjoy this and I'm going to enjoy talking about it and I think I might actually um, probably won't show any of the games themselves on video because that's far beyond what I've got the capability to do but um, happily talk about the way the campaign's going and maybe show some still photographs or something and on peaceofwar.com I'll probably make a project uh, last I did actually have a project up there previously and then just delete all these but uh, it was for a campaign that was already over and I was working from notes and it basically just got, it just, I, I had no desire to, to put up pictures of and recreate games that have already been played. But uh, this one will be live and um, you, you could do that, go through and, and fill it all these, make them curved. You could also do it the slow way by just sort of drawing two lines and then going like that and then, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. I like my maps nice and edgy. I um, also like to save quite often. So, that's our road. Let's find a good color for our road. How about ground cover sand smooth? Oh, sort of, this is sort of American woodland area type thing. So we've got our map in North America with the thing rolling on the North American chart in Dawns and Departures. So let's start rolling some dice. That is a six for, of course, this square here, which is an adjacent area, which is woods. So the way I do woods, is I take this. Uh, there's a difference between woods and forest. Uh, woods is much less. Uh, hold down control when you click and you can, um, it's a copy. And you press it and it goes for move. Uh, oh, should grab the bottom. And the way I do woods is I take um, the medium one and one of the small ones and uh, a couple of small ones or, or you know, the, the tiny ones and just sort of scatter them around uh, you don't want them looking the same you just go like that go into our thing here and choose light green or um, something to that effect and that's not gonna work okay I just realized that I mixed my colors up so grass light green is for the base and then grass dark green is for your woods so you go through like that and then you just hit each of these little sides here. Um, with for the actual template, I'll make the woods. Uh, I'll actually have them pre-colored, so you don't have to go through this. So, pop, pop, pop there, and there, 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 and then you can rotate them as well. So, for example, you could select you know, only this hexagon here. I should have made these components. Select that there. Select your rotate tool. And just twist it like that, just to break it up a little. And that is our woods hex. So, on to the next one. This is on the road area. Uh, roads are much less likely to have... Uh, well, it, it depends on the, the thing you're rolling on, but roads are mostly um, generally more open areas. Double six. Wooded mountains, okay. Uh, oh, that's going to be a little tricky. But uh, we can go through wooded mountains. Uh, this is where you can just move the road. So for this case, I might actually move the road 15. And another 15. I'll actually move the road like that. Uh, and what this will do is give me a place to stick my mountain. So the way mountains work for me is I take the, the medium one there. Again, you can do whatever you like, but I, I like to do it this way. 
Uh, he'll need a little bit of scaling. So just gently scale that down just a touch. Again, these are just sort of rough template analog things. And uh, give it a spin. Just make sure it's not yeah, not doing that. Uh, let's spin it over here a little. Like that, just so it doesn't touch the road. Let me put it down. And uh, the way I do that is then get one of these gravel ones. Doesn't have to be you know, great. Like that. Oh, should have copied that before I... So, copy it over. Apologies. Uh, and then we grab that and bring it over here. Like that. Um, this is probably going to be a... Sorry. I'm trying not to make any more mistakes. So, grab then the, the small one. And actually, I'll leave it as, as is since we rotated the first one. The goal here is to have the the thing look uneven to have the mountain look sort of uh, it's like it's been stacked up on top of one another so that's how I do the mountains um, there Set of mountains and then woods. We'll just grab one of our wood hexagons there and we'll put him down in there. Oh, I've got my point snapping on anyway, like that. And that is a wooded mountain, a wooded uh, mountain area. So these are basically just guides to, uh, to help you set up your tabletop. So wooded mountains could mean that. In this case, sort of the right flank of the def of this player's half will have some sort of mountains or or big pieces of rocky terrain, whereas the sort of other side might have uh, woods. And of course, this road is, is not to scale. So this so this whole thing could be woods with a big piece of mountain, or the whole thing could be mountains with a little bit of woods. It's, uh, it's up to you and the way you want to design your table. So on to number three. This is, of course, an adjacent area, and a seven. Uh, sparsely cultivated land. Okay, this is, this is a fun one. You put hexagons down, like that, and like that. And like that, grab your tool and find vegetation bark, and just go like that. And that is your sparsely cultivated land. Um, that ba it basically just means it's 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 lightly farmed. So uh, one, I normally go one farmhouse and a quarter of the board covered in farm. Oh, well, well, less sorry, less than a quarter of the board covered in farm. Uh, the rest trees, the rest sort of. You know, uh, a little bit of rock, a little bit of tree, a little bit of open area. You know, sparsely cultivated farm as opposed to uh, cultivated land, which is actually quite rare on this table. But uh, cultivated land is, the whole board is pretty much a farm. So, a barn, animals, uh, fields, that sort of thing. So, let's roll for this side here, uh, this square there. Five, that is a, a forest. So a forest is different to a woods, it's much bigger, so I'll we'll use the bigger hexagon for it. And, oh let me scale that down, sorry. So when I say it's bigger, I mean the sort of coverage is a lot bigger. I like to really fill out forest hexes, like well, dump a whole bunch of trees on there. And you can do them however you like. I just like to put a lot of a lot of trees down, and we'll give most of these a spin. Just so they don't look too awkward. Ah, uh, come on, let me get that. There we go. Again, it's smarter to just sort of have a whole bunch of uh, differently oriented, different sort of rotations for your hexagons. Maybe for the final thing, I'll put that in there. But uh, you just go like that. Give it a whole lot a go. And then I like to make these very dark. So give them the vegetation blur number three. And that'll make that darker. So the darker ones are the forests. Much more wooded. Sorry, much more wooded. 
much uh, a lot of difficult terrain, a lot of sort of um, log obstacles, sort of small rocky obstacles. You know, you guys know the difference between forests and woods sort of thing. So onto the road area here. This um, may be a long video. I might cut some of this out. Four woods. So woods is easy. We'll just take what we've already got here. Control C. Put it down there. We'll pick up a little bit of that. Once you've got the uh, the templates down, it's super easy to, to do. There we go. That's our wood hex. Oh, square. Sorry, the other campaign used hexes. This one's just squares. So on to square number six. Uh, it'll much. It'll greatly pick up now. Number ten is wooded mountains, and we have that here. Oh, why did it just drag a piece from over there? So we'll grab our mountain from here. Put him down there and then give him a rotate. Just so he looks a little different. Don't grab the whole map. Ah, of course it's going to grab the whole map. Let's rotate it like that. Let's look exactly the same. Um, give a little bit of a rotate and then grab our woods from here. So there's mountain and forest, and then there's wooded mountain. So I'm not going to grab the forest ones. Just the wooded tokens. And just sort of scatter them around. Delete that. So there we go, wooded mountains. It all should pick up from here, guys. Uh, we're going to go here. Six. I hope I'm rolling that in frame. Six for that is woods. So, um, now what you can do is just copy and paste the same wood hex. I don't want to do that. So I'll copy and paste this part of the wood hex, and I'll put it over there. Then I'll copy and paste it again, and put it there. But then delete. Ah, I don't want that. Ah, crap. Sorry. <laughs> ah, sugar. Ah, what did I do? Ah, let's go back and do that again, shall we? I'll just take this bit here. And I don't mind if I pick up a line or two. That's not a, a drama. Um, there, and we'll give that a rotate. Just to break it up a tad. Just delete these two little lines. Grab some of these little ones. Let's put it over there. And then, um, oh, let's we'll grab this one here. And we got another wood hex. Onto the road. Sorry, I've flipped the camera up to down on you guys. Apologies. Ten, grassland. Leave it as is. Six for the next one, which is next to it. Uh, another woods hex. Uh, wood square. So I will turn the camera back to where it was, sorry. So, woods over here. So, we can sort of see that the map's coming together. We've got a little bit of farmland, a mountain, some woods. What's going to be on the other side of the woods? Is it going to be maybe a village? Could it possibly be some kind of, of important site? Uh, does this have important sites on it? Uh, has it oh, sorry, it has a town. Uh, it's only got a town. Okay. The, uh, the, the Northern Europe and the Southern Europe ones have much more... So you can run into important buildings and that sort of stuff. But North America tends to be uh, a lot more sparsely populated, and uh, yeah, as it should be. Just shrink that a touch, just to fit it in the square. Oh, we should grab from the bottom. It's not a very good tutorial, sorry, but uh, it's just sort of my method of doing it. So there we go. Almost halfway done. 10 for over here. 10 is, of course, wooded mountains. So it looks like we're going to have a lot of mountains on the board. I might actually drop two mountains down there. Give that one a spin. Whoa. Yeah, well, I'll give that one a spin. Just leave them as is. So, Wooded Mountains is the next one. Let's get our mountain. Let's chop this little hexagon off here. So, 
So it looks like we're going to have a lot of mountains on this uh, this map, which is cool. Um, you just got to make sure that um, if you start getting to, if I get heaps and heaps of mountains, I'll just I'll just you know pick something else or roll the dice again or roll one dice again or something. You don't want to keep playing on the same terrain all the time. And, uh, you know, the Lardy's the Lardy's rule books are more like guidelines anyway, so they're sort of. Here we can see we've got a little mountain pass there. So if any game is played on this sort of square, it'll be a mountain pass game. You know, just something as simple as that. Okay, the road hex. Five and two is seven. That is woods. So we'll just grab our little couple of these, scatter them around. You don't want to have too many of these next to each other. Like another one or two there would, would really throw it off. So grab one of these. Put it in there, put it in, sort of... <laughs> ah, see, it's trying to freaking jump up on me there. You know what? Uh, put it way back further there, and then I put that one there. Grab my rotate tool. Select that. So you can't deselect in this. That's really annoying. Anyway, that I'm just give him a spin, just enough to sort of deorientate it. Disorientate it? Yeah, just make it look, break it up a little. On to the next one. Three and two make five. Five is forest. Okay, so we're back to our forest. Uh, let's grab a whole chunk of those. Put them down there. And then I'll get the big one, because I like to have the bigger hexes here uh, represent the forests. Just because it is, you know, just more coverage. It looks cooler, and it makes it sort of easier to spot. Um, you're not going to glance at this map. You are actually going to be looking at it if you are if you are making any decisions based on the game. So don't worry about instant recognition from far away. But uh, it is handy to be able to sort of just look at something in see it for what it is put that down there so let's have a look we're halfway through we've got some woods a little bit of a mountain area a tiny farm more mountains the woods sort of continue up the road here then they peter out and then they come back so we sort of got a little clearing in the middle of the woods so if we had a game on this board maybe just trees on the outskirts and a few fences or something um, little mountain pass here maybe it comes down from range over here and this this is this itself could be a pass in a mountain there's a little like sort of goat track so the range from going through there where you sneak through but the main roads here and then over this side it's all impassable and you know we got a little outlier here so we're sort of starting to sort of tell a story we're going through um, not the Shenandoah Valley um, oh by the way uh, if you move up the Shenandoah Valley, you head south, and if you move down the Shenandoah Valley, you're going north. For anyone, just curious. That's a, yeah, anyone, I did not know that until I read uh, Bernard Cornwell's fantastic Starlight, uh, Starbuck Chronicles. With, uh, I can't remember the name of that sergeant that he's got in there. He, he writes fantastic um, Starbuck, uh, not Starbuck, um, uh, Cornwell, who wrote Sharp, uh, has, his, his American Civil War books are fantastic, the four books he has, but they're incomplete. Unfortunately, he gave up writing them in the 90s, I believe. But the, f the four that exist are fantastic. Uh, eight. Highly recommend anyone get them. Hills. Okay, Hills are cool. Uh, Nathaniel Starbuck is a son of a northern abolitionist preacher. He travels to the south. He basically runs off with like a circus, and then he travels to the south trying to, you know, find his friend. The war breaks out. Uh, he joins the Falconer Legion, which is a sort of custom regiment that uh, Cornwell's made up, that put together by Faulkner, which didn't happen, by the way, in, in real life. There were um, private armies put together. I can't remember the name. There were some very uh, distinctive private organizations, basically funded by, by private individuals for the Confederate government. Anyway, but uh, yeah, he joins the Faulkner Legion, has a few battles, um, gets, you know, gets up there, and uh, then Faulkner's son basically defects to the Union. It's a very interesting book. A very, very interesting um, books. Book, four books. It's very, very good. Um, I would love to recreate the, the Faulkner Legion. I should get some more miniatures and, and paint them up. 
four for the Road Hex, which is Woods. The Fulton Legion is very, very cool. Uh, very interesting. I wish I could remember the name of the sergeant that he sort of has in there. I think he becomes a lieutenant at one point. Um, what's his name? I'll put it in. I'll put it on the screen now. But, um, Grizzlo? Grizzla? Grizzlow? Can't remember. He, uh, Starbuck falls in love with his daughter, who's a prostitute. And, uh, it's very. It's a very weird, like moral book. It, it's. A, it's. If you like books to explore, explore your sort of morality of this um, person who's been raised to detest slavery and who does detest slavery, um, fighting for the Confederacy. And sort of trying to justify it to himself. And I think he eventually reaches the point where he's like, uh, I'm not going to try and justify it to myself because I can't. I'm basically just doing this to spite my father and, and that sort of thing. So Hills, I'm oh, sorry, I should, shouldn't have been rambling. So Hills here are the, the what is it? The, the small one and just, Color them same as the ground. I think I picked the wrong one there. So, color them just the same as the grass. Yeah, you can see there. And um, yeah, hills just as. Again, this is just a guide for help you setting up your table. It also has campaign effects. So, moving through a town. Um, if you're sorry, if you're trying to scavenge for supplies at a farm, you're probably in a better position than if you're trying to do it in the mountains. Uh, if you're trying to trying to find someone, you're probably more likely to find them in a town or in a farmhouse or something like that. You can you know, scavenge your supplies. You can you can it, it, moving through certain areas is easier than others. So the road, one next to the road there. Three is a swamp. Okay, so we have a swamp there. For swamps, I just draw on the map, sort of rectangles. Oh, sorry, rectangle hexagons. I use hexagons. You don't have to use hexagons. I use hexagons because the initial map that I did up was actually a hexagon based map. That's the one I showed you earlier, and. Um, yeah, a bit of swamp there. And uh, the hexagon, since the squares themselves were hexagons, I thought, yeah, make it a little hexagon thing. Sorry for this one here. Five. Forest. Okay, we're getting some more density. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of that sergeant, because he's, he's a very good character. Um, and Cornwell actually does write. He writes the American Civil War very well. He, um... He does write it very well. Like people, he's obviously praised for for Sharp, but um, his stuff during the Civil War is, is also fantastic. And I really wish he'd go back to it. But with his Saxon Chronicles that he's got coming out now, with the uh, Utrecht, son of Utrecht, and was it? It's Utrecht of, of Bevenberg and all that sort of stuff. For the, that was made into a TV show, I believe the series. So he's probably wanting to get those cranked out for the uh, for the TV series, which I don't blame him. Yeah, it's cool to see. I, I love the Sharp TV series. Um, so, hopefully some people can fall in love with the... Well, not fall in love with, but, you know, hopefully they can appreciate the... Uh, the What's it called? Warlord Chronicles or, or Saxon Chronicles? The same way that I appreciate the Sharp books. Okay, the Road Hex here. Uh, four. I'm basically rambling on and on because... That's a Woods Hex, by the way. Because this is frightfully boring. And um, I would like to sort of some content, and I might as well ramble, because I'm pretty good at doing that, or at least I, I can do it. I don't know how good I am at it, but I can do it. 